All right, moving on, moving on to the next segment here today. Okay, we're running two instances of this recorder. Okay, so these are some clarifications about the terminology that we're going to be using classes and objects so typically I you know to disambiguate those uh, things I would uh, you know sometimes say classes of objects versus instances of objects so when we say an instance it's a real thing when we say when we talk about the definition of what that object is and how can we describe it to our programming language uh, that would uh, mean that we're talking about a class of objects now uh, the definition of a class which exists in some sort of a source file like this uh, that particular definition um, should be unique you typically don't want to uh, by mistake or otherwise to replicate the de definition of a house class you just have one definition uh, you know or some real estate property whatever the actual name of that class is but it's typically unique and only f one file is uh, defining that particular class on the other hand once you have the definition and your programming language accepts it understands what you're trying to describe there then you can create a, a, a virtually unlimited number of objects of that class as long as you have re enough resources you have enough memory and uh, you know your system doesn't have some other limitations on the, in terms of uh, creating those classes uh, those uh, objects for you so sometimes you can you can sense I, I can mix those two but again object is something that's already instantiated at runtime when we talk about those things and class is the definition that has to happen before any object can be created in software um, this is an analogy from our book and analogies you know making analogies in software is a little tough because essentially we need to be aware that everything sits in computer memory right anything that we do on the computer anything that your you know CPU does for you all of that uh, is uh, living in the computer memory now of course this is uh, trying to perhaps picture a uh, cookie dough and perhaps this is uh, a, a space that available to, to us in the computer memory and somehow we have this cookie cutter which essentially is analogy of a class because it shapes up the star so it can then be used to you know apply that particular shape all the time and all the time we get a, a very very uh, similar instance of a class which is like you know cookie one two three and four right so it seems like you know it's an okay analogy we just say look we have this unique shape we call it we internally and officially we call it a class and it shapes the star in some way uh, using the programming language uh, you know description of it but then we can instantiate all these cookies however this of course analogy is not very consistent with how memory works because in reality you know uh, this cookie cutter never removes a cookie from this dough like this you know once once created it will always stay in the same region of memory right um, also in this particular example it seems like you have this object cookie one two three and four and you can essentially mm, you know use it um, um, and it's almost like looks like it's well first of all like you can relocate it someplace else but also is that it's it's quite um, uh, unique in terms of um, you know once created it's pretty much almost about all that you can do with it uh, because you have the shape now and it's and it's like it's available to you but in reality in computer memory it's very easy to copy things right so I can quickly create mo you know many copies of this cookie or some other uh, you know cookie 
And that is by all means, n you know, not uh, reflected in this particular analogy. So the dynamics of how you work with things and what assumptions you make should probably not rely on this particular analogy. But this is just a little, you know, hint on what the class may look like, you know, uh, logically, and what instances of objects may look like or feel like uh, a little bit. But uh, again, in software, making analogies is very difficult. Is is just because it's much more abstract than real life. It's just you know those zeros and ones. Uh, they do exist and uh, like I said very important for example is that once you create a, a, an instance of a class and I will point to this area right now for instance uh, once you create an instance of that class um, this memory address where this uh, instance is created becomes in a way another name for this uh, object and becomes its identity for the rest of this uh, of its life cycle an interesting question is also what happens at the end when we no longer need this this you know cookie one or two or three what happens to all of this well of course nothing really happens in in physical memory where it's where it exists it simply gets marked as no longer used so another you know object may be created there in the same spot in a while, like a triangle or a square or something else. All right, so um, just a few, you know, high-level hints about, uh, uh, you know, this analogy and what a class versus uh, an instance of it is. Let's try to save that.